correct. The starter slash generator to cool. Zulu weather wind three two zero at seven visibility one zero. So let me just explain. So this is a starter and a generator. There's nothing we can do about using it as a starter, and as we as we use it as a starter, it will induce heat into the system. So there's nothing we can do about that. But as soon as it is done being a starter, you're asking it to be a generator generating 84 amps. Not really tasking this generator that's rated at 250 to 300 amps. So you're giving it an opportunity to cool what you just asked it to be a starter. Now, once you go to start the other engine, what are you asking of this generator? I was forgetting we're super using the same duper. Generator again. Super duper. So we're just going to allow it a little time to cool before we actually induce more heat to make it a super duper generator that's going to put out 800. 900 amps temporarily and then start that one and some guys will actually leave the generator switch off to enhance that cooling faster because with it with the generator switch off then it's not doing anything but spinning and cooling itself like that you see that little hole the inlet for the big the engine their little hole is the inlet to the you can see a fan in there and it's just and if you leave that off it's now it's the batteries are still powering everything else and that is just spinning getting pure cooling so it cools a little faster I'm with it, I wish we had a temperature gauge so we could really quantify all of these techniques yeah. right because there's really nothing to quantify based on amps or you know all that stuff it's just automated weather observation so if i remember you said you know just pick a certain time period two minutes or whatever exactly to wait. anything is better than immediate right. Zero, three thousand one hundred scattered okay well i think we're good to start the other one yep but the other thing you're also doing with it on is you're recovering the start battery so that because you're obviously we're using a bunch of the start battery and we're using a bunch of this generator in combination to start that motor it's all about heat trying to reduce heat to extend life and reliability. Is that cool enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to max? No, 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 that's fine. Max cool. You know what the difference between 66 and max cool is? About a degree? <laughs> no. If you set max cool, it's like setting it to 55. 55, okay. They just don't want to go all the way. To, so max cool is setting it 55, and you set it at 66. And it's like I tell Mary Beth, if it's 80 degrees out and you set the thermostat at 72, it doesn't get cooler any faster by setting the thermostat at 68. <laughs> on is still on. Still on. <laughs> <laughs> it just means that you're going to have to come back to the thermostat later because you're going to get too cold eventually. <laughs> then you get the Mary Beth, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she still doesn't understand it. Everybody thinks that the, the thermostats are smart smart and that if I ask for really cold it understands that it needs to get really cold really fast <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you faster yeah good. faster you know my desire is big now <laughs> exactly what I say when I grab every checklist. I grab a checklist and go, let's see what I missed. Because that's what a checklist is for. Well, if I did everything correctly, 
We should be good to, for takeoff config. Uh, Valley traffic, uh, pipeline Diamond Star 97, Charlie Foxtrot is taxiing from the ramp to runway 36, Illinois Valley. Ready? There she goes, I'm ready. One thing uh, Lonnie was saying to me is, when you're at an uncontrolled field, just say blue and silver eclipse instead of your yeah. pin number. Yep, it's helpful. I mean, either one is not wrong, but right. but uh, it's more helpful, I think, to your average GA pilot to just say, because he might even say, what the hell is an eclipse? <laughs> Illinois Valley traffic, a eclipse, uh, blue and silver eclipse at the ramp, uh, taxiing to runway 36. Another thing that goes along that same line of thinking is when you're out VFR in a uncontrolled field doing practice instrument approaches, don't say I'm mark well inbound because the average GA person who's usually not IFR radar has no clue what you're talking about and where okay. that is. Good point. It's the same thing with. I've gone into to uh, airports that I, 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 you know, I'm I'm just coming into this for fuel, and on the radio I'll hear a guy say, "Hey, I'm over the the smokestacks uh, for a landing." It's like, <laughs> I, I'll, okay. I I'll be the guy, I'm the asshole that comes in and said, "Hey, uh, not familiar. Where are the smokestacks?" <laughs> just to remind him that. You're, not everybody. Not everybody's local here, dude. <laughs> I've had that from ATC too. Uh, make a left base over the shopping center. Oh yeah, I've gotten that too. Like when you go into Fort Lauderdale, um, oftentimes they'll go, "Okay, uh, report over the landfill." Yeah. Well, and you're in downtown. I mean, the East Coast, and it's just a sea of roads and houses, and it's like landfill. Where the hell is a landfill? Exactly. Well, thank you for taking your time to get both of us. Oh, my pleasure. Day. No, thank you for coming to Illinois. Oh, I, this is uh, the opportunity oh, to fly. Wonderful. Illinois Valley traffic, Eclipse 26 Little Echoes crossing 257. Now you can pick up the new habit. We're moving. Oh. So you turn that on. And then when we come to a stop, you turn it off. It's if it's not in your habit pattern, it's you're you're just not gonna it's you're gonna forget a lot. <laughs> Diamond Star 97 Charlie Foxtrot departing runway 36 for uh, heading of 080 on departure. Good. Illinois Valley traffic. She's leaving. I guarantee that King Air is leaving. All right, sir. Engine failure after VR. Outside references fly in the airplane as your primary focus. Wings level. Straight ground track with your feet. And then get the gear up in that process and then once you kind of lose the runway then we're going to come inside and focus on performance BYSE with takeoff flaps and if you feel we don't have any obstacles we're going to let the airplane accelerate without descending to our BYSE plus 20 get the flaps up and then reacquire the BYSE okay. and and the the uh the technique, or I should say the technique, the habit pattern that you have on a normal takeoff of going heading altitude change work 
works with a single engine because when you push altitude change and the engine really did fail, the airspeed instead of going to the CLB reference speed will go to VYSE. I'm sorry, listening to hit the traffic, but say the last thing about the VYSE. When you push altitude change and the engine actually did fail, right? instead of the airspeed bug going to CLB reference speed, okay. it will sync to VYSE. That's perfect. Yeah, it's, it, that's what I said. So even on a single engine failure takeoff, the same habit of heading altitude change is what you want to do. Now, because we're not actually going to fail an engine, I will, when you go heading up to change, I'll reach up and set it to VYSE, as the computer would, Okay. if it was a real engine failure. He's turning 080, so I'll yep. just tell him we're going to make a... Just uh, say we're uh, out. straight out. Just say straight out. Okay. Illinois Valley traffic, Eclipse, uh, Silver and Blue Eclipse, 26 Zulu Echo, departing 36, uh, straight out, Illinois Valley traffic. Takeoff config, okay. Beautiful. You got the throttles? I got them. Watch your Rotate fingers. Rotate at 89. Watch your fingers, there you go. Landing gear. Landing gear. Flight tight traffic, Cessna 138, sir. Uniform is 12 miles to the northeast, inbound the land. Absolutely runway, beautiful. Five. All right, so now we come inside. We're at VYC. We're a little above, so I'm just going to let it accelerate, just like you're doing now. Maybe a little nose lower, get a little more acceleration. There it is. That's good enough for me. And now your new VYC will post in about six seconds when the flaps are actually up at about 125. So just, but heading out to change will do. Will make it all happen for you. That's it, just keep flying the airplane. Yep. And nav? Nope, heading. Yeah, stay on heading. Nope. About, how Fly about the flight directors. Airport? Fly the flight director. Nope. Because you, you're doing the rudder. So you actually have too much too rudder. Too much rudder, okay. That is one, you are one of a million. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm talking one in a hundred guys have too much rudder. No wonder my language is getting tired. And it says, let go of the stick every once in a while. Perfect, look at you. Trim it up. And the way I like to fly the, for any airplane hand flown is I'm constantly letting go of the stick. So that Checking eventually, that eventually I get it in so perfect trim that I can fly with one finger. I can yeah. just sit here and just... <laughs> I'm putting in a little <laughs> rudder just <laughs> so my leg doesn't get tired. Yeah, and, it, and it really didn't make a difference, did it? <laughs> okay, That's it. Flaps up. Um, and That's it. That's all you got to do. Bravo, You're going to fly to a safe airspeed. And just focus your single engine, you're going to focus on that. And then at some point you can get to the autopilot on. We'll go to 2,500 feet, I'll get that in for you. Traffic. should have gave you a VFR clearance. And let's make a left turn to... Uh, 240. Hello. Six nine zero zero nine five miles to the southeast. We're gonna All right, your cast message that you got was a Illinois Valley left engine fail. Red cast. Eh? You get the, can't go ahead. And put Absolutely. Well recommended. Landing gear. Landing and gear. Major heading two four Landing zero. gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Traffic. Traffic. Plus seven climbing. It's a king air.
Will you do radios? Yep, I got the radios. Engine failure. Take off, left or right. Throttles idle. Let's see if during takeoff we want after takeoff. After VR. On takeoff, I've uh, got our airspeed. Flaps are up. Gear is up. Airspeed. Yaw damper is on. And my autopilot's working today. Oh, well, that's right. Okay, if time permitted, no engine damage. We talked. You talked to Greg about. We're just going to go back and land. Yep. Turn left one eight zero. Okay, left one eight zero. Yeah, and, and one of the things I, I didn't mention to Greg, I didn't want to interrupt him, but. When you f go through this checklist, is there anything that you actually do other than read? No. No. Not the only thing off. you actually do is reach up and turn this to off. Okay. That's it. So the rest is just reading, 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 and it's just giving you information as to what you're going to be doing. And now so, we'll talk to ATC. Yep. We're Declare an emergency. IMC. Yep. Um, let's see, is Chicago Center Eclipse 26 Zulu Echo declaring an emergency at yeah, Illinois Valley uh, three, Airport. Zero, four, we have an engine failure for requesting uh, RNAV 36 uh, direct to Markle. Markle. Uh, 26 Zulu Echo, I uh, have your emergency declared and you're cleared direct to Markwell. You can maintain 2,500 until established. You're cleared the approach runway 36. 2,500 until Valley established through the approach uh, RNAV 36. Eclipse 26 Illinois. Illinois Valley. So we'll hit direct the Markwell and zoom out a little to see what it's going to give us. Okay, and the same kind of a teardrop uh, parallel entry. Nope, you're no, just this actually is teardrop. a teardrop. Yeah, <laughs> And we're on heading, so we need to go into nav. Let's do direct one more time. And I'm cleared the approach. I'm going to go ahead and hit approach. Excellent. Excellent. Make sure my chart's on the correct page. 3-6, got our minimums in, 900. Uh, they're in there. It's just not showing up. Just recall them. Yep. Just yep. There you go. Okay. Now there's not a lot to do. Brief the approach. When we go to Markwell, we'll be at 2,500. We'll descend to 23. Jody's is the final approach fix. Glide slope alive. We'll drop the gear. We'll put in takeoff flaps. We'll not put in landing flaps until. Landing assured. Illinois Valley traffic. We're going to fly 165 knots. Lot 45 for runway 36. Illinois Valley. Burlington, Iowa, Burlington traffic. Flat is 5, now 3, Fox Delta, 25. You're awfully quiet. I'm forgetting Delta, something. No, you're doing CV. everything right. Uh, That's why I'm quiet. Left Burlington, engine fail, uh, airspeed. Land as soon as practical. White side traffic. Got the landing data. The ref speed is there. ABS is armed. Well, that's. Downport traffic. Warrior. That only happens when the gear comes down, but it'll say in off. Yeah. So you discovered it at the same time I did. How did you discover that this is going to teardrop and not parallel? I just looked at the diagram. And how do you know that it's going to actually teardrop? Because when you cross the fix, the first. Heading is a left turn 30 how, degrees. How do you know that? It shows you in the blue blue course. Because that's exactly what it showed Greg. But his Gre was Greg's was parallel. parallel yeah. How did I know that zero, is zero, different nine, than this? Approach, even though the teardrop is exactly the same. Were the turns the opposite direction? What is that right above my finger? That little fix? That, no, that little arrowhead. The arrow? That okay. arrowhead means we're going to go this way, where Greg's arrowhead was over here going that way. So 
pay attention to that arrowhead, it'll tell you exactly where it's going to go. Do you mean the uh, holding pattern is counterclockwise? Is that what, you, what no, that no, means? No, no. Your arrowhead is right there, which means when we go to the fix, we're going to follow the arrow. This His, blue? That, yes, that oh, little blue arrowhead. Oh, I was looking at the little black thing. No, no, no. The, the little okay. blue arrowhead. Okay, I'm with you. His, Greg's blue arrowhead was over here going oh, okay. down that oh, way. Okay. Now, now I understand. Because that's when, when he said, hey, it looks like we're going to teardrop. I said, no. I said, look again. And that's where well, you got to look at that arrow. And the, but the cool thing, the reason I point that out, is that that hasn't always been there. They added that later. Oh. Which is a nice feature to be able to predict what it's going to do. You'll help me watch for traffic? Yep. I've got my 10 mile range. range. Okay. There's a guy basically in the downwind pattern right now. Hopefully he'll be a full stop and not a factor. Here's our left turn. And there he goes. Two six Zulu Echo. This is Chicago Center. Uh, we've got uh, three aircraft in the pattern. Uh, I'm going to need you to hold uh, as published at Markwell. Expect further clearance in 15 minutes. Roger, hold at Markwell. PT only. Continue hold. How easy was that? Yeah, button push. Yep, and now it says holding, holding, holding. holding. Very good. And now it doesn't, it, I mean, it, we, we do have the whole hold here, but it won't turn magenta until we get to the IAF, and then it'll, it'll just sit there and hold forever. Right. And then he says, 26 Zulu Echo, uh, all three aircraft are on the ground. You are uh, cleared the approach. Cleared the approach. 26 Zulu Echo. Then you want me to discontinue the hold? Will it work if yeah. you do nothing? Uh, it will put me in a hold. Yeah, so how do we make it go to pass Markwell to do the approach? Um, I would just get out of the hold. Yep. Landing, gear. Landing, landing, gear. landing, gear. Landing, gear. There you go. Now we're going back to PT only. PT only. So we know that it's just going to do the procedure turn and go. Okay. You had such a wonderful power setting that was holding 177. 177, and then you screwed with it. Well, 165, is that not the correct number? 177 was looking great to me. <laughs> I always fly in the, in the airport vicinity at 165, I guess. I mean, but what, see what's happening by trying to do better? Yeah, I got way You're doing low. worse. So yeah. what I do is I just set a power setting. Just if it's it. in the ballpark, leave it. Okay. It, it, I'm all about which, which I need to... to hopefully instill in you, I'm all about reducing my workload. That's what I want to learn. And you're, doing, and you're doing things that, although they work, it's just an increase of workload, and there's no reason to be working that hard. Okay. I'm a lazy pilot. No, I think it's good that you've got time to monitor the voice. Like right here? Looks like a good power setting to hold this. Burlington I'm good with that. So quit messing with it. Yeah, <laughs> stop dicking with it. <laughs> or dick with it every 10 minutes rather than every two seconds. <laughs> That's what I love about the Eclipse. Our, our gear and flap speed for takeoff flaps is 200 knots. And we, we can basically do anything as long as we're below 200 knots, which is not the case in a lot of other airplanes. You got restrictions of like, the Phenom 100 is gear 180. And that t sometimes oh, is a pain good. in the butt. Yeah. Like my Columbia, my, my first takeoff flaps is 127, and it's so hard to get that airplane to slow down below 127 to get flaps out. It's a pain. Where this one, I'm, I never feel restricted about getting gear and flaps down. Right. 200 is very comfortable. It's an amazing airplane. Yep. And, and the 140 for full flaps is very easy to achieve. Every once in a while, I gotta, you know, get a little slower, but it's pretty easy. Now once we cross Barkle, I'm going to go to tall charts. 
Okay. Why wait till crossing Markle? Um, because I want to verify that the magenta line goes straight ahead and didn't go into a hold again. Okay. It's a little bit fast. You agree with slowing it a little bit? Or yeah, think we're okay? make one little correction and then leave it alone for the okay. next 10 minutes. Then 190 is not too fast. Okay. 210 would be too fast. Anything over 200 would be too fast. Because, as you know, when I throw the gear in the flaps, that slows the airplane right down. And we wouldn't go to 2300, we're just going to leave the 25 because that's our missed approach altitude. And, and one, once again, if you wanted to go to 2300, absolutely nothing wrong with that. You're just, More workload. You're just doing busy work. Right. You're going to have to, one, make the airplane 2300 go down, wait till it captures, then reset 2500, and it's like, why? If I do nothing, it'll work just the same. So the next event is the diamond. Uh, yep. The glide path alive. Looking for it. Illinois Valley traffic. Eclipse 26 Zulu Echo is about 10 miles to the south. We'll be doing a straight in runway 36 with a low approach at Illinois Valley. And like I said, if we were at 2300, you would see that the glide path would come alive about two miles prior to Jody's. So when this says two, you can expect glide path alive if we were at 2300. So this would it'll be maybe 2.1, 2.2, it'll come alive. A little bit further. Yep. So our missed approach is straight ahead to 2,500 feet. Just, Just like every RNAV I know. Just about every RNAV. And in busy airports where I was telling you you can't get a word in edgewise, maybe you mention it to, when you first talk to approach. Give them a heads up that you want the RNAV instead of the ILS, where yep. it's not quite as busy. And I'll add, there you go, 2.1, what did I tell you? Whiteside traffic. And I'll add, um, when I ask for the RNAV, I'll White add traffic. direct Markwell, like okay. you did to Chicago Center. Okay. Because if you just say, I want the RNAV, oftentimes, if you say nothing else, they're going to give you vectors to final. And I don't want to do FMS vec. Okay. So you almost always uh, just go to approach. Dir yeah, direct whatever convenient. IAF or IF, whatever. We've got the gear down, three greens, take off flaps, which we'll leave. You're done. Now it's just done. all you got to do with the autopilot on is airspeed. That's your only responsibility. Airspeed and then getting to your decision altitude. Hearing that horn, that train horn. And we got LPV showing. It shows yep. we're in approach mode. Hearing that train horn that should remind you to set the altitude. Missed approach altitude. It's already set, but let's get rid of the yellow blinking by going one click back and one click up on the altitude on select. Yep. Because you don't want your eyes getting used to that. Oh. Okay. Why was it blinking? Because we left 2500 without you doing it. Without change, oh, okay. Without giving it a command. Correct. It caught the glide path. It'll do that every time, which is great. I like the fact that it does that because it reminds you to set the altitude if you pay attention to it. Well, you have to know what it means. Should I slow closer to VYC yeah. so we don't so go I, I try to do a linear deceleration so that I'm 137 here. By the time I get to 900 feet, I should be at VYSE. Let's see if you can do that linearly. <laughs> you mean to keep my hand on it and just keep moving it back a little? Is yep. that what you mean by linear? I mean, I don't care what you do with your hand, but I want to see that airspeed go increase by a knot every second or okay. two. And I, want it to, I don't want to see it stagnate. I want it to decrease down to VYSE so that when this says 900, that airspeed's at VYSE. Okay. I literally try to challenge myself to see how good I can do. Pulling back the throttle will increase the, de the decrease. Pulling up the throttle will decrease the decrease in their speed. Right. off runway That us? Nope. Yeah, that's us. He's, he's taking off. He should be right now. And Illinois Valley 26 Zulu 
Echo is a two mile final runway 36 will be a low approach. Five hundred. Got you in sight. Should be a factor. A runway. Yep. He's all right. He's fine. Okay. Approaching so minimum. Notice how the airplane's doing this while yeah. you're moving the throttle. You need to push on that that rudder to help it. The uh, yaw damper won't do that. There you go. Minimums. All right, nothing in sight. Go around. Go around. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Uh, it's killing my leg here, <laughs> trying to overpower that. Yep. So a little rudder. You actually have too much rudder. You have too, you have too much rudder. Right. Slowly backing it out here. Okay. So what is the flight director doing? Uh, arming. Oh, nope. Excuse me. It's a GA. Oh, GA heading, GA pitch. We need to go to alt change and nav heading. Nav. And nav. Yep. That's right. Nav for, to do the mist. And the speed would go to VYSC. I'm a little worried about that guy. It's all right. He's out. Okay. <clears throat> So what I'm getting at is, understand what's happening here. What is the pitch doing? It's climbing at a thousand feet a minute. Nope. It is climbing at VYSC, so it's raising the nose to come back to VYSC. Is that oh. what you want? Yes. Okay. So we are at a VYSC with takeoff flaps. Is there a better performance single engine climb? Yes. What is it? It's about 122, V50 plus 20. Nope. V50 plus 20 is when we can get our flaps up. Which I should do now. Are we at V-Ref plus 20? No. Okay. Lower so the, Lower the uh, nose a little? I'm not looking for solutions. I'm looking for you understanding what's going on. Okay. So we're at VYSC with takeoff flaps. We would like to be at VYSC with flaps up. So we need to increase airspeed. How do we do that? With the autopilot on and the situation, we'd have to increase the speed bug ah. to okay. what we anticipate is VYSC. Perfect. So allowing the airplane to increase airspeed. What oh, beautiful. I, what I'm seeing you do is you're just watching it I'm and not understanding. You've got your hand on this, but guess what? It's not coming because right. it's raising the nose going back to VYSC. Like a dog watching TV. Exactly. Nothing's happening. So now we're above V-Ref plus 20. Now, and we're, we're already leveled off, obviously. We can climb up a little more? Nope. We'll leave it right there. Make a left turn to 210. Left 210. Heading? Yep. And you've got the other engine back. Regional traffic, Clips 858, Gus here, taxiing for takeoff. Runway 36, Illinois Valley. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. I could just tell from your body language that you weren't understanding what was happening. Yes. Because you got your hand here, and I can tell you're waiting You're waiting for the airspeed to increase, and it's never going to come. Exactly Because right. initially, we we're in GA pitch, and GA pitch is what? Well, 10 degrees. Right. Uh, so uh, with a solid 10 degrees and the airspeed stagnated at 112 knots, right? is it ever going to increase? No. no. So we've got to do something. We've got to lower the nose. Okay. And the way we could do that is nav altitude change. With the actual engine failure, the airspeed's going to go to our current VYSC, which was slower than us, which would raise the nose. But we could have immediately grabbed the speed bug, increased the speed so bug, easy. it would have lowered it, and it would have been beautiful because the autopilot would have stayed on and everything oh, would have just worked, it. just worked That's perfect. Yep. perfect. So lower but, nose. But I would rather, rather, rather than write a note of what to do, I would rather have you understand the, the system okay. so that when a different scenario is presented to you, you don't you will you will know what to do when you're understanding what's happening. Okay. Instead of just watching TV. <laughs> <laughs>
And, and that's why I spent the entire ground school doing what I did because even though we spent three, four hours doing it yesterday, now that you're sitting watching TV, it's still not sinking in. Yeah. Like, what does go-around pitch do? You got all the right answers when I ask you the question, but you should be asking yourself when you're looking up here, what is it doing? Right. And, and I got my hand here. Why is it not increasing airspeed? Right. GA pitch. Well, GA pitch. Oh, that's why. Oh, well, then let's put it in altitude change, which is an airspeed mode. And when I push out to change, it's going to sync to VYSC, which is actually now slower than me. It'll, whoop, no, I don't want to do that. I want it to increase speed. Whoop, there we go. Yeah. And having that instant understanding of how it works helps. I'm going to spend some time on that table. Exactly. And ask yourself, what is that? What does that do? How does that work? All right, turn left heading of 180. This will be vectors for the RNAV runway 36 approach. Okay, left 180, and I heard you say to uh, Greg that you could go back into history. You uh -huh. don't have to, oh, I thought you You could reload, it doesn't matter. You could reload the approach or, again, less workload, go to history and awesome. there it is right there. And do we start, are we starting at Markwell? I'd like to, or whatever you tell me. Vectors to final. Eclipse 858 Gulf Sierra departing to the west, Illinois Valley Airport departing to the west. See you, Greg. Take care, guys. Southport traffic, so, ATC said he's giving you vectors to final okay. for the RNAV 36. Okay, so we're going to go to the FAF. We're going to intercept it. And we're going to put it in NAV. Yep, there's one, two. And we're going to use we're this. We're dancing. This will be what we use to uh, control. Yep. We're control dancing. Board. I'm one of those strange people that loves the magenta line for situational awareness. It just you mean the oh, dash line? What did I say? Magenta. Yeah, line. the dash line yeah. because it just helps me understand where I am in relationship really to the airport, the the FAF. Uh, yeah, and well, and you're not alone. And everybody loves this dash line, but, but they, see, they put a little bit too much credence on the dash line, though. That's okay, but I like it better. No, I do like the dash line. It just realize the dash line is exactly that bug. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same as that dash line. If they just put it on the movie map, which is helpful, but just don't just don't rely on it as a um, as something that has to be there. Well, once the dash line, you, you know, you do your final uh, arm intercept, uh -huh. the dash line goes away, so this page is useless to me, and that's when I always switch to chart at that point. Yeah, the tall chart. Because then when you land, you're automatically on the taxi chart. I love that. I love that feature. Eclipse did so many things right. That's what I mean. ISNS did so many really cool intuitive things that no one else does in the industry. And at the same time, they did so many stupid, totally non-intuitive, non-pilot-like things. And it's like, okay... Who, who are you guys? <laughs> it's yeah, like, a mixture did, of there, there's, a, there's a bunch of smart pilots in your group, and there's, then there's pilot people that are just not pilots at all, and they're just engineers. We know just telling me what I learned today, that you can just go back into history. Yeah. I, I, as far as I knew up to this point, you always have to reload the approach. Nope. And I thought, you know, why do they make it that way? But that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it, it really, but the only time you really use it is when you're doing this training, multiple approaches. That's the only time. But no, I'm all in favor of shortcuts and learning yep. shortcuts. I'd like to learn your technique for ILS, yep. even yep. though you hate it. Yep. Turn left, heading of 090. Left 090. Two six Zulu Echo Descend Maintain 2300. Well, you're telling me I have to do that? Yep. I will. And a lot of times they'll do that. They'll just, you got to do it. It's their, their deal. You could try to say, can I stay at 2,500? <laughs> and, they, and they probably would let you. They probably would let you, but it's just like being a little nitpicky. The same approach. We've already briefed it once. Minimum should be the same. 
make sure they're still in there. 26 Zulu Echo, I show you six miles south of Jody's. Turn left, left turn, heading 030. A little bit northwest. Maintain 2300 until established. You're clear the RNAV runway 36 approach. How's the attitude indicator? Excellent. Oh, maybe it's just the first flight of the day or something. Notice how it rolls out on the 030 heading, even though it says FMS. It's not in FMS, it's on a heading. You are the only one that would understand that. <laughs> that, I, that. I, I hate it. Because this is supposed to be gospel. This is supposed to be exactly what it's doing. Well, it just shows you understand the, the logic of the system. Right. Traffic. And that's what I want everybody to understand. A couple miles northwest. It helps to solve problems when things go wrong. All right. And our missed approach altitude will be 25 again. Excellent. That's one of the reasons I gave you that descent, to make sure you have a habit pattern to set that new altitude. You told me also once when you hear the horn at or 500, uh, 500 feet to double check. Another great. These are all things that I've learned in my life because I keep forgetting things. <laughs> so I so I have these crutches to tell me. Now, unfortunately, we're dealing with this because we're 200 feet exactly away from 2,500 feet. Oh, yeah. And you just got to kind of live with this for the little time that it's going to be. Illinois Valley Traffic Eclipse 26 Zulu Echo is uh, 8 mile final runway 36 will be a low approach at uh, Illinois Valley. Uh, I've had flap fails twice now when I'm doing flaps, take off flaps in a turn. And Brett tells me it's because one wing is going slightly faster than the other. And on the Tamagawas. Oh well, you've got some sensitive. Well, you got some sensitivity issues then, because you, you should be able to do that no problem. It's um, it's not any fun. So. Yeah, the, the the actuator amperage meter is a little too sensitive. Is that something he can fix? Or? I'm not sure. And then I'm in the habit of not putting full flaps in until because of other traffic behind me. Uh -huh. Here, I'm okay. Like Matthew told me, he says you can still, you know, you can still uh, go 140 knots with full flaps. So. Okay, men's are 900. We don't see the runway. So again, pay attention to yellow blinking things. Oh, thank you. It's not natural. There you go. Yeah, so what I do, I do the same thing you do, is if I got someone behind me, I'm going to leave it and take off flaps until I get to my stabilized approach criteria. Because the stabilized approach criteria says I need to be in the landing configuration by when? 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet IMC. IMC. 500, 500 feet VMC. So if I'm VMC, I might delay it all the way down to 500 feet and fly 130 some knots with takeoff flaps. Nobody is going faster than 134 knots. Even at, at 737s, approach speed's 130 some knots. Is that knots. right? Yeah. What about your 67? Uh, maybe 140. But, I mean, you doing 135, you're not slowing anybody up. Okay. And then I'm going to slowly, as I get closer, bleed off my airspeed down to ref. Perfect. Perfect. And then are we doing a go around on this? Yeah, so what we're going to do on this one, instead of the missed approach at the minimums, I'm going to tell you to go visual, and you're going to get to practice that last little bit visually, and then I'm going to say go around at 50 feet. Right before, oh, okay. So at 50 feet, when you normally would go to idle, you're going to, I'm going to tell you go around. So that will be your first opportunity to get a visual calibration of what 50 feet looks like. Okay. Illinois Valley Traffic, Eclipse 26, Zulu Echo, short final runway 36 will be a low approach at Illinois Valley. 500. Illinois Valley, Skyhawk 197 Bravo Alpha. And leave it on autopilot. Approaching minimums. Uh, 
how how far can you bring the autopilot down to? Um, no visual. Two hundred. One hundred and fifty. Minimum. Okay. So go around. Here. Well, we're going to go to fifty. Yep. Should I take it off autopilot? You can use it down to one hundred and fifty feet, which is okay. right now. Okay. And now take it off. Can't do it below one hundred and fifty. But I mean, pan fly it. Yes, because you can't use it below one hundred and fifty. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble I'm telling communicating. You, I'm telling you the rules. I expect you to apply the rules. <laughs> Go around. There's 50 feet. I don't like to tell you what to do. I want you to figure out what you do based on the rules, performance, limitations. Okay. And all I'm going to do is tell you those rules, performance, limitations. I'm with you. Okay. So when I say the minimum altitude for autopilot is 150, when would you click off the autopilot? <laughs> Above there. <laughs> it's back to the dog watching TV. You're up low. We'll bring those up eventually. Okay, and what's next? Well, it looks like you've aviated. What's uh, second priority? Navigate. Okay. And... Everything's already done here. Okay. Navigate. What's your lateral mode, vertical mode? Ah. Right, alt change and heading. Nope. Oh, Publish missed. We're missed, okay. So we missed our altitude because go around pitch did not arm uh, out no, quickly enough. So again, you're watching TV. We're going publish Papa, missed so every time. Once you're done with Aviate, it's nav altitude change, piece uh, of cake. Yeah. It's already or set up. Toga out. already activated it. Uh, okay. I'm fault. Get in the flight directors. Sir, turn left, Stop heading of... Uh, 324, do it, Papa, three mile final, straight in, runway 334, stop down port. 230. Just want to see if that was good, a guy in Illinois Valley. All right, this will be a setup for a visual runway 7. Okay, so use that. I'm not good at the OBS thing, but... Um, okay. So the first thing we got to do is what do we want to go direct to in order to OBS off of? What waypoint do we want? I'd say runway Number 36 three six threshold. Three four, three well, we're going to runway three 7, though. Uh, runway 7 threshold. Yeah, okay. So this is something I just learned, that instead of going direct to destination and using the destination as our, we can actually go to the destination and load runway 7, even though there's no approach to it. Nice. Oh, you actually loaded. You got to get rid of that runway 36. RNAV. There you go. Now okay. execute. Continue and execute. Sound the traffic, Scout 7 Romeo Romeo, turning left downwind for tonight. Continue and execute. Now, runway 7 waypoint appears. We can go direct to that. Three miles to the south southeast, inbound to overfly the field at 2,000. There you go. And now, since we have the waypoint, which is the threshold, we can OBS off of that. Okay. And we can go into, there you go, OBS on. Now your course selector is active for the CDI. Okay. So how do you set a VOR course or a localizer course? You have to hit VOR. Nope. You're already in FMS. How do you set the course? You mean this? Yeah. How do you set the CDI course? Uh, 
This is something I don't do. So, you do, uh, VOR and ILS. How do you set an ILS course? Right there, that little knob. Okay. So set so a course seven. of zero seven zero. And now, if you want to be really good, you go to the airport diagram and figure out what the actual runway heading is. And it's, that you can even fine tune it more. Ah, uh, okay, so zero, zero seven, seven four, four, set that course. And now, let's turn uh, right two four zero. Right. Right turn, yep. Trip, I'm just, just going to get you out a little farther. All right, so now we've got, there's our final. We can capture that final, that magenta line, because it's in the CDI. Are we capturing that magenta line, or are we capturing that CDI? CDI. Very good. So we got the CDI set up, so all i got to do is push nav, give myself a heading towards it, push nav, and it'll it'll capture it just like a VOR. Sorry, um, go ahead well, no, let's just give it, I just want to give you a little more time. Okay. Because um, we're six, six and a half miles away. So we're going to imagine imaginary final approach fix. How far away from the threshold should the final approach fix be typically? Five miles. And how high should you be at the final approach fix of five miles? Fifteen hundred feet. Yep. And what is fifteen hundred feet AGL here in Illinois? About twenty-one. Twenty-one hundred feet. So I'm going to get to twenty-one hundred feet, five miles on that course. That's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, I just landed in Davenport. Uh, so you just called the airport in sight. ATC just said, cleared the visual. Okay. Make it happen. Oh, wait, wait until we get to 15? Up to you. I mean, like I said, your file approach fix is five miles at 2,100 feet. So we could probably go now. Up to you. I mean, if you want to go out 15 miles and come back, that's up to you. If you want to capture it, just push nav. Arm, nav. Nav is armed. It immediately armed, and because we're so close, it immediately captured. So it's just going to continue the turn. You can see the course is alive already. And now we got to get ready for that five mile final approach fix, altitude, airspeed, everything. And when are you going to throw the gear down? Uh, about two miles from... Yep, so about seven miles. And we need to be at 2,100 feet. Or it doesn't work. Getting kind of screwed up. 
Can I save it? So we went back. You, you, you oh. went back to 2100. You started pushing oh, buttons. Oh, oh, okay. You're just I'm pushing sorry. buttons here. So let's just recover here. We'll get a real quick heavy descent. This is what happens when you just start pushing buttons. Yeah. This is new to me. It isn't, because you've done LNAVs before, haven't you? Yes. This is exactly what you're doing on an LNAV, except you're just creating the waypoints, not the waypoints being created for you. I hate LNAVs. I try to stay away from them. Yep. Okay, so there you go. Now we got to get full flaps before our 500 feet. Get down to or close to our V-Ref, maybe V-Ref plus 10, something that is comfortable. Here comes 800, 700, 600. There you go. And here you go. Look outside. And you've just kind of created this visual approach. Now, was that more work than just looking outside and going for the runway? A little bit. Yeah, and I agree. <laughs> so, um, th then if you see the runway, all that workload goes away. This is when 500. you do this when you're not familiar with the field or it's night and you're having difficulty seeing it and you, you're worried about your glide path, all those things, you can create these things to help you. I'd like to give a little more room with those trees, you yeah, agree? Autopilot off. Like I said, this is not something that we're going to use when I see the runway 10 miles away and everything's fine visually go, but this is something we can use when we're a little challenged with visibility. Is this going to be a touch and go? Uh, up to you, touch and go or a low approach. We could do one of them uh, as a brake failure too. Yep. Alright, so we're concentrating on V-Ref. We're looking at that number seven as our aim point. We've got all obstacles in sight. Get on that center line. Easy on the throttle corrections, just small corrections. Those are big corrections. There you go. Keep it driving to that seven. Now idle. Round out just to level off. Don't. There it is. That's perfect. Leave it right there. Perfect. And go. Rotate. Birds. That was a perfect pitcher, perfect landing. That's exactly what the Eclipse book says to do. Well, I pulled throttle to idle quite a bit way back there. Earlier than you than normally? Yes. Yeah, so your 50 feet is, we just got to get your 50 feet re-caged. And altitude change Let's put it in 2,100 feet. All right, make a right turn to south. And you can use the autopilot or not use the autopilot, whatever you want to do. You can back yourself up with an approach or not back yourself up with an approach, but we're just going to do three, six patterns. What's a 3-6 pattern? Runway 3-6. Visual patterns. We're so just going to do touch and goes. We're leaving runway 7? Yep. Okay. So we could use the OBS to go over to... Totally up to you. That you can either use an approach, or you can look out the window and see runway 3-6 and do a visual. Whatever you want to do. I want to get learn a little something about it. Go to three six zero. Realize this this tool that you're learning is just that. It's just a tool to give yourself situational awareness as the extended center line. You can also couple to that extended center line if you want the autopilot to fly that or just visually do everything. We'd have to get out of this then, right? Nope. Put it on three six? Oh yeah, you're right. Yep, exactly right. Um, Get out of the OBS mode. There you go. Now, 
You can use the autopilot if you want. And the traffic starts at Romeo Romeo, turning left base for tonight. So we just took it out of heading. I meant to put it in heading. <laughs> it was already in heading. Okay. And now we go to procedure? Yep. Runway 6? Yep. But that's that does it. nothing. That Nope, that's exactly what we want, right there. Oh, as I don't have to... Continue. Just, okay. Modified. There's your runway 36 threshold. Perfect. Quick point. So choose it. Go direct. OBS. And OBS. OBS. Okay. Uh, OBS mode. That becomes like my new yep. nav. That hit got, this. And you've got your course selected to 360. You're good to go. There it is. And you can turn oh, right. That's suspended. Yep. Because once we reach that waypoint, it won't advance to any other waypoint because there's no other waypoint to advance to. Okay. That's what suspend means. It is suspending the automatic sequencing of waypoints. Right turn to west. Out the window, do you see runway 36? Seven Harbor, November 474. No, not yet. Do you? Yep. See, this is a great time to use this to, to see it. You're cleared the visual. Now you can manually do it on or just push nav. Arm, arm nav. FMS goes to white, arm nav, FMS goes to white, it immediately captured, course comes alive, it'll turn right on it, and then the nose of your airplane will be pointed at the runway. Pick it up as soon as you can. Oh, I see it now. Right straight ahead there? Nope. Uh, Look here. This is what we're doing OPS to get SA. Oh, so, I see it. There you go. Now you can do whatever you want. You can leave the autopilot on and do all your things, or you can take the autopilot off and the workload of this all goes away. Yeah, let's take the workload away. Very good. Illinois Valley traffic 26 Zulu Echo is seven mile final runway 36 will be a low approach, or I'm sorry, a touch and go at Illinois Valley. And this will be brake failure? Okay. Or whatever you want. Yeah, touch and go, but it'll, we can simulate brake failure. Five point eight miles. We're at twenty one. We could put in field elevation. So and you then get, hit alt change. You're gonna use the flight directors on this? Yeah. Okay. Looks like we're pretty high. High and fast. Remember what I said in the briefing? If I if I just let you do a visual without any cues, you're gonna be high and fast. <laughs> so again, these cues, I think you're mixing up what they're about. Looking out at the runway and seeing a three degree visual picture is the lowest workload possible. And that's something we can do today. But what we're trying to do is for the days that might be nights and I don't have all those visual cues or I have very uh. like three miles visibility and I'm trying to get in and I can't see the runway, I'm giving you tools to help you get there. Okay. 
but what I what I see happening is you're using these tools, not understanding them, and now you're getting yourself in a position where, hey, just look outside. Okay. Like, are you using the flight directors? A little five hundred. Okay. Well, it shows me a little bit high, and I'm nope. comparing that with what I'm seeing. But if you follow flight directors, you're going to be diving into the dirt. Is what I'm saying. Okay. You, you, I hope you're not using the flight directors. I'm mostly looking at ref speed at the moment. Very good. So click the red button. Get rid of that. If you're not using them. Get rid of them. All right. Get on that ref speed. I want to be stabilized at ref with power by the time we get to 50 feet. Tiny little corrections. That's too much. Tiny little corrections. Once the correction is put in, take it out. Just tiny little corrections. Center line, center line. That's it. Tiny little corrections. A little back on the power. Center line. Get over to the right. There's 50 feet. Idle. Get on that center line. That's it. Perfect. I don't see your problem with landing. It's just maybe your 50 feet is a little bad. All right, so this is what's going to happen on a brake failure. You're just going to push it up, rotate, done. Now do a missed approach. Flap, gear, flap. Landing, gear. We're above VREF plus 20. Flaps up. Landing, gear. Heading L2 change or nav L2 change, whichever is your clearance. Excellent. Aviate's done. Navigate's done. Call tower. Tell them we had a brake failure. Blah, 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 blah. Auto pylon above 400 feet. So I don't see any issues with your landing. So perfect. It sounds like the only thing that you haven't been doing to the book is you, it sounds like you're delaying your pullback to idle. Yeah, I thought that was supposed to happen when he came over the numbers. No. Well, if, you, if you're coming over the numbers at 50 feet, that means your aim point is about a 1,200 feet down. For the captain bars? Where your aim point is where my aim point is, is where it's basically at the number. Okay. The number 36 is about 100 feet past the pavement threshold. And is that correct? Is that where your aim point is? I would say the nose I'm aiming at the numbers, and then I, if my airspeed's good, I'll and that's what, somewhere between the no, numbers and the... No, no, no. The number is about 100 feet past the threshold. Okay. The actual 3-6 on the painted on the runway starts at about 100 about feet. 100? Okay. Yeah. So it's almost the threshold. The number is the threshold. Okay. What I'm asking you is where are you aiming for when you're doing V-Ref and coming in to aim? Where are you aiming to the hit? Numbers. Okay, and that's where I aim. Okay. So you will not be, when you cross over the threshold, you're probably going to be 10 feet because your aim point is the number, which is okay. 100 feet down. By definition, if you're aiming for the normal aim point that is to the book, your aim point is just past 1,000 feet. And if you're 1,000 feet aim point, i.e. your touchdown's 1,000 feet down past the threshold, you will cross the threshold at 50 feet. Okay, if you're aiming for the captain's bars? The 1,000 the foot markers, is that what you're foot, calling yeah. captain's bar? Okay. Right. So that is 50 feet over the threshold. But you fly like I do, which is I'm aiming for the numbers. I'm aiming to touch down around 300 feet down. So okay. 50 feet is going to appear about 800 feet prior to the threshold. Right. Would you do the next one? Sure. I, I learn a lot when I sure. just watch an expert um, do it. But, or as you, you're finished. but as you know, I'm not doing that at night. If I cannot see all the obstacles, obstacles right. terrain, trees, power lines, all that stuff that's invisible at night, right. I am going my standard three to one, follow the vazies, the red over white. I'm not doing any red. I'm in a, and I'm going to accept my landing of 1,200 feet down, which okay. I don't like. But at night, if I'm unfamiliar, then that's what I'm going to do. And the runway's wet. 
It well, so now, out. yeah, so now, so now that the runway's wet, it's night. Uh, I better, yeah, I better have a at least a five thousand to six thousand foot um, runway because I'm not going to combine a short field with landing at twelve hundred feet down and a wet. Yeah, at that was, night. That was what was going on. Yeah, no, that's that's no good. Well, I'm glad to hear you that that is not normal. <laughs> I thought the beeping meant your brakes are fine. Uh -huh. And as far as like triggering a flap fail, I, am, I, am I thinking correct that if you're at a slower airspeed, there's going to be less of a differential? Um, so do you understand what the failure is, why, why it's failing? There's more force on one flap than the other. And how does the computer determine force? I don't know. Amperage to the okay. actuator. Okay. So the, the amount of amps, it reads the amount of amps going to each actuator. 500. Holy cow, this thing's got a bit of a roll. It, it reads the amount of amps going to each actuator. And if the amperage difference from one actuator to the other is different beyond a certain value, that means one actuator is getting more power, i.e. it's being asked to move more lift or move more force. And it's basically saying, hey, I don't like that. Something was wrong. Like a track is busted. All right, flaps are full. All right, so now I'm focusing on being trimmed up at V-Ref. There's my V-Ref. Power's coming in a little bit to hold it. I'm making tiny little corrections. My aim point is the three and the six, as you can see. There's my 50 feet. I'm just gonna keep that aim point going. And then I'm gonna level off and just arrest the descent rate and touch down. That's it. Uh, Illinois Valley traffic, uh, Golden Eagle 37424, seven miles to the south, inbound landing 36, uh, Illinois Valley. You were about three or four knots below ref. When I touched down? Uh huh. And I should be more than that. But I mean, as we were approaching the threshold, we were. Well, I keep seeing the stall. Yeah, well, say halfway between that and the next markdown. If my V-Ref is 91, at what airspeed do you think I should hit the pavement? 80-ish? Nope. VTD would be 76, 78. Okay. So realize that when I get to 50 feet at V-Ref and I go to idle, the airspeed's going to start bleeding off from 92 or 91 to 76. So by the time I hit, by the time I'm coming over the threshold, in our, our case, the threshold is kind of, it is not really anything we're, we're no, monitoring the, because uh, I'm monitoring my aim point. But the threshold, we're gonna come over at about 10 to 15, 20 feet. I'm guessing. Okay. Um, and you're completely visual, you're not looking here. Oh, yeah, I'm not anything. looking here. Once, the last time I, I'm visual, or the last time I'm looking down here is, right before I go to idle to check my airspeed okay. to make any last minute correction. But, um, yeah, so by the time I go to idle, completely visual to do that round out and that and my aim point, or I should say, my eyes shift to down the runway um, just so I can get center lined and leveled off and the airspeed's just gonna do what it's gonna do. And I probably, if I'm doing things right, I'll probably hear a stall, warning. And that's good, because if I'm doing everything perfect, I'm going to hear that stall warning right before I touch down. Okay. Because you'll see, if I'm touching down at 76 knots, which I'm supposed to be in accordance with the book, that stall, I'm into the stall warning. There's just no way around it. Now, a lot of guys don't like that, and I understand that, because passengers don't like it either. Um, but that's the way it is. So if you, if you consciously decide, 
I'm going to fly faster so I don't hear a stall warning, then you have to adjust your landing distances accordingly. Well, I've been doing like you said recently, and I just tell my passengers that I'm hoping we hear a little stall warning. That means it's a good landing. Perfect. Yeah, and then they're all like, oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, hey, great. <laughs> and then when they don't hear it, oh, bummer. Oh, bad landing. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Hang on, let me get this trim fixed here. All right, your airplane. But it was a firm landing, though. That's okay. I, I don't mind firm landings. I mean, are you looking for that sweet, just kiss of rubber? Yeah, yeah I don't like to wear out my tires any faster than necessary. Uh, well, obviously, that is ideally what you want, but I will take that landing and stop in 1,500 feet over your landing and stop in 3,000 feet. Yeah. How far out? Five? I just look. All right. Like I said, all this today is just too much work. It's easier just look outside. That's why you turned everything off. Yeah. Fly the airplane. No, but it's like I tell guys, a good landing starts back on downwind. You know, you get the gear down, you start a descent of 500, 600 feet per minute, get the flaps in, get all that stuff done so that I arrive on final at just above V-Ref, and then all I have to do is just focus on V-Ref and my glide path and aim point, aim point and airspeed. But forgetting flaps is going to screw this up. Well, I don't want to trigger a flap fail as oh, I'm yeah. telling straight. That's a bummer. All right, so are we low, high, or right on? A little bit low. Yeah, so fix it now. And are we left, center, or right? Left. But fix it now. Fix all these things now so we don't have to deal with it later. Okay. We can focus on just airspeed. Let's fix the alignment. Let's get over to the right. Let's get on our three degree. The sooner we fix stuff that like looks this. straight to me. Okay. How about you? Eh, it's a little bit to the left, but left. that's okay. All right, so there's our three degree. Set the aim point. Let's get the airspeed. Let's get the flaps. The sooner we can get there, the better we're going to be on that landing. Now we're a little high. Yep, let's fix it. Fix it now. There you go. We're still going higher and higher and higher. After you said we're still high, we're still climbing. <laughs> yeah, yet the pitch was down. No, but we were our VSI was still up. <laughs> high, right on, or low? High. Let's fix it now. This is what I mean by fix it. You're going to do this. This is the correction. There's the three degree. There it is. Now, were you looking at altitude or I'm just... I'm looking outside the whole time. Okay. All right. So I won't look at anything but the threshold. Yep. And the air We're speed. still just a little left of center. Put the center line under your butt. Okay. Because right now it's in my right cheek. 500. It sounds like when I'm asking my friend to taxi, he's always... How are we doing there? Is that... Are you happy with I'm that? A, I'm going to show you where the center line is. That's the center line. Really? Yep. Okay. Seems like we're to the right of it. Nope. That's why you keep lining up to the left. Your eyes... Look at the... See that telephone pole? That black telephone pole? Yeah. That is just to the right edge. The You can see the approach lights are the center line. Are we centered now in your view? Uh, yeah, we're pretty centered. Yep, okay. right there. That's it. You're working it. This is perfect. Just keep this picture. Keep it driving down. Stay right on V-Ref. This is beautiful. John, you're just awesome. 
Keep driving it to 3-6. Get, get on the center line. Come on, get over here. That looks Fix center it. to me. No. That's the problem. Look at, look at the approach lights. Now they're underneath you. All right, idle. There it is, right there. Just keep driving it to 3-6. Now level off. And that's Stop. it. Hold it. Perfect. There's the stall warning. And, oh, nope. See, now you pulled it back to Stop. flare more. Should have just, right when I said hold it, that's where you just said hold it. Go for it. Well, I think that was a little wind there. True? Nope, you pulled it. You yank. Rotate, but, rotate, rotate. Okay, well. No, you, you pulled the nose up. Not aggressively, but just, I think you're, again, you're looking for that sweet touchdown. All I do is I just make everything airspeed-wise perfect, glide path-wise perfect, and then when I go to idle, it's all mechanical. Idle, round out, hold, stop. That's it. Round out, boop, boom. And if I want to show off a sweet touchdown, I might hit the trim a little bit and just pull back. But I know I'm going to be eating up runway. A lot of times, instead of because you're you're most guys are landing with a heavy stick. Are you landing typically with a heavy stick? Try to trim it out. You try, but. Are you landing with a heavy, like if you let go know. of your stick in the flare there, I guarantee the airplane's going to do that. Drop. And that's, yeah, I get, I, it's pretty much 100% of pilots land with a heavy stick. Um, yeah, Lonnie took over on short and he says, oh, you don't have this in trim. So yeah, I, I think you're probably Exactly. Right. But, so what I'm getting at is if you want that sweet, sweet touchdown, a technique that can be used is instead of pulling back for more flare, just start trimming. Okay. That, and, that, and it will actually do that. It, it'll start flaring almost not even noticeably by just trimming. But your approach is perfect. Okay, your airspeed control, yeah, your glide path, for, uh, three, three, death, your aim point, everything is perfect. Except for right us. It, yeah, the except line. the left, right. And that's pretty common. You know, guys just have a, a visual problem with it. I'd like to get the right picture. Illinois Valley traffic, Eclipse 26, Zulu Echo is left down one runway 36, be a touch and go, Illinois Valley. Flaps, flaps, flaps. I do these at the same time. If it Just were. wanted if, to look and see. If there were, if there was a way for me to program my own Eclipse such that when I lowered the gear, it automatically brought the flaps to take off, I would do it. And yeah. if there was a way in my Eclipse to raise the gear and automatically raise the flaps from take off to up, I would do it. I literally want them to do it at the same time. Uh, we're a lot closer in this time. Good. Full flaps then. No, I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, that's right. Shit. That really is a pain in the ass if that if that is consistently causing a problem. Usually on the takeoff laps is what happens. It's uh it's an actuator uh, issue. There you go. Nice. I'm All right. looking at anything, I'm just trimming and yep. looking at the threshold. Aim for V ref. The only, only thing is you should be looking at the threshold and your airspeed. That's it. Those are the only two things. You already have a feel for where that power should be based on your arm, your muscle memory. Do you feel like we're centered? Nope, just slightly right. Okay. Illinois Valley traffic, 2-6, uh, Zulu Echo short final, 3-6, touch and go, Illinois Valley. Slightly right. Centered. Aim for that 3-6, aim for it. We're still kind of level, there we go. All right, now it's V-Ref, keep that aim point just the way you got it. We're slightly left. 
Yeah, I feel that now. Look at look at the approach lights. Look at how they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of get a better feel for that. Yeah, now you're right on center. A little low. A little slow. Yeah. So I'll delay idle to now. This is about 30 feet. Round out. Hold it there. Don't don't move a thing. Don't move a thing. Nice. That's it. Perfect. That's just absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with those landings. Because let me tell you, a sweet touchdown on a wet runway is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Well above the airspeed. Flap. Oh, you already got it. Beautiful. All right. Are we ready for the last one? I want do you to do it if we are. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. So here we go. We're pulling closed like in the military. You ready? This is how we do it. <laughs> closed approved. I love it. Closed approved. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. 60 degree bank. Okay. Okay, for Burlington, you got citation. That plane which can't do it now. Overhead brake. Oh yeah, that is cool. This this airplane just doesn't do it very well, but. Straight in, two, three, six. Oh, that was us. We straight in for two six. Yeah. You betcha. No, I don't think it's Illinois Valley. Illinois Valley Eclipse two six Zulu Echo is left down one runway three six. It'll be a touch and go. Or do you want to make it a full stop? Full stop. Okay. Full stop. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. If you hit that outward button. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that beeping will go away. <laughs> It's a little tough sitting in the right seat, but we'll give it a shot. See. Yeah. Now, on the carrier, you don't ever want to stop Sync your rate. turn. Sync rate. I know, honey. 500. You don't ever want to stop your turn. You want to minimize your wings level so because if someone's shooting at you, you don't want to give them a nice airplane. All right, awesome. so here we go. I got lucky. Rolled out on the center line. Getting to idle here. So I'm a little unstabilized because I'm in idle. Even though my airspeed's close, I'm in idle and this is not stabilized. Gonna work out about right though. We'll see. Yep, looks like it will. I would go <laughs> idle, here's VRF, I'd go idle here. Uh, and then I just set my landing attitude and reason. just let it go. And then now I'm trimming. Right, so that's now, your see, but look at my thumbs doing. I was constantly on trimming. the trim oh, that was to get the sweet touchdown. I loved it. I really enjoyed that. No, I did too. That was fun. I, lo I love beating up the pattern. And I don't get to do that with customers because <laughs> nobody wants to do that. I like to learn yeah. landing technique. <clears throat> All right. You have the airplane, sir. Illinois Valley traffic. 2-6 Zulu is clear of 3-6 uh, Illinois Valley. I break the rules by... Uh Put, traffic, putting it in a trim while I'm taxiing. Eight miles east of the airport, we'll be entering a left crosswind from the east to the west at 1,700 feet for a uh, downwind runway 36, Illinois Valley traffic. Hey, did you say Eclipse was clear of the runway? Yep. Uh, that was good. That was fun. Thank we'll you. Have to, have to, uh, I really liked the last approach. That was... You've landed on carriers? No. No, but we, in the Air Force, you do the same thing. You do an overhead. But the whole idea of the overhead, there's two reasons military pilots do that. And it's one, I can come over the airport from far away doing 
250, 300, 350 knots. All airplanes can recover very quickly. And then I'm going to dissipate my airspeed over the runway by high G maneuver. So I don't need speed brakes. I can just do into a high G. And that just dissipates airspeed immediately. And then the other benefit, so number one benefit is I can recover airplanes very quickly. The other benefit is that if I've got someone camped out right outside the fence of the Air Force Base and he's got a gun, I am not giving him a straight and level slow moving target. I'm always going to be giving him the hardest, I mean I've got to slow down to land, but I'm going to give him the hardest thing to try to shoot at, which is a turning airplane yeah. descending. 